The Expanse is a sci-fi show about space, politics, action, drama, lasagna, and ancient alien mysteries. It's set in a future where humans have colonized the solar system. Earth is the big old political power run by the United Nations. Mars is a rival superpower with advanced technology and military. In the outer planets and the asteroid belt are the Belters, living on the dangerous frontiers of space. Belters have their own culture and language, and their bodies have adapted to low gravity. But the resources and wealth of the belt are still owned by the inner planets, Earth and Mars. So a group called the OPA fight for belter rights and independence. So tensions are high between Earth, Mars and the belt, and a single spark could cause war. In episode one, Holden works on a ship called the Canterbury. He used to be in the Earth Space Navy, but now he's kind of slacking and avoiding responsibility and taking his shirt off a lot. Naomi is an engineer from the belt. She's smart and secretive about her past. Naomi is close with Amos. Amos is weird. He's emotionally detached and can be brutally violent. But he can also be friendly and loyal, and he tries to be a good man. Amos has a mysterious past involving organized crime in Baltimore. Alex is a pilot from Mars. He loves flying and cooks a mean space lasagna, and he left a wife and child back on Mars. Holden, Naomi, Amos, and Alex are the only survivors when the Canterbury and then a Martian ship are both mysteriously destroyed. Holden steps up as a leader to protect his crew. They steal a Martian warship and name it Rosinante, which is a reference to a story about a foolish heroic knight. Because Holden's heroism is often impulsive and naive, and sometimes does more harm than good. Naomi becomes his voice of reason, helping him make better choices, and they eventually start a relationship. The destruction of these ships sparks conflict between Earth, Mars, and the Belt. The Martians blow up the moon Phoebe, Earth blows up the moon Deimos, and the system hurtles towards all-out war. With the help of OPA leader Fred Johnson, the Rossi crew investigate who started this conflict, which leads them to Eros and Miller. Miller is a washed-up, beat-down, cynical, crooked cop who doesn't really believe in anything anymore. But he investigates the disappearance of a girl called Julie Mao, he learns that she rejected a life of wealth and privilege to fight for the belt with the OPA. She's tough and determined and selfless, and Miller comes to love her without ever having met her, almost like a religious faith. Miller meets Holden and the crew on Eros, and together they find Julie dead, infected with a mysterious alien virus called the Protomolecule. It turns out that Julie's father, a powerful businessman called Jules Pierre, is secretly experimenting with this protomolecule. He had the Canterbury and the Martian ship destroyed to deliberately spark war as a distraction so that he and his scientists can infect everyone on Eros with the protomolecule. Julie tried to stop him and just got infected herself. So Eros turns into a nightmare with this alien contagion, and Holden and Miller work together to escape. Their personalities clash, because Holden's an idealist who believes in peace and truth and justice, while the cynical Miller uses deception and brutality to survive. They find Dresden, the scientist who infected Eros, and Miller kills him on the spot. Holden is furious that Miller would execute someone in cold blood and kicks him out of their crew. But on Eros, the protomolecule is consuming the bodies and minds of infected people, and seems to be building something. Probably something bad, so the crew make a plan to destroy Eros. Fred has this giant Mormon spaceship called the Nauvoo, and they plan to slam it into Eros to knock it into the sun. But Eros inexplicably dodges the ship, seeming to break the laws of physics, and it speeds towards Earth. So Miller goes into the heart of the infected Eros and finds Julie Mao. This infection spread from her, and her consciousness is part of the protomolecule. So he asks her to move Eros away from Earth and to crash into Venus instead. 
Eros and Julie and Miller disappear into the clouds, and Earth is saved. But while all these heroics are happening, Avasarala deals with the politics. Avasarala is one of the most powerful politicians in the government of Earth. In season one, she's ruthless in fighting OPA terrorism and Martian aggression. She tortures and blackmails and lies and betrays some of her friends, because she believes that Earth must come first and will do anything to protect her home and family. But she discovers that the conflict around Eros wasn't caused by the Belt or Mars, there's a conspiracy within her own government on Earth, working with Jules-Pierre Mao to deliberately cause war and use the protomolecule as a weapon. Avasarala gets help from Bobby. Bobby is a Martian Marine, a powerful soldier loyal to Mars. At first, she wants war with Earth, but on Ganymede, her squad gets wiped out by a monstrous protomolecule creature, and she discovers that her own government was behind this. Jules-Pierre secretly works with Mars as well as Earth to weaponize the protomolecule. His scientists experiment on children, transforming them into these hybrid protomolecule killing machines. So Bobby leaves the Martians and goes all Iron Man to defend Avasarala, and works with the Rosi crew to fight the conspiracy. These people from Earth, Mars, and the Belt settle their differences and come together as a team. Amos makes friends with a botanist called Prax and helps him save his daughter. Naomi and Alex save Mars from protomolecule missiles. Bobby kills a hybrid to avenge her squad, and Holden arrests Jules-Pierre Mao. The evil conspiracy is ended. But on Venus, the protomolecule has been busy. When a science ship investigates, the protomolecule disassembles their ship, and poor Adam Savage asphyxiates. The protomolecule is intelligent and powerful and purposeful. In season three, it emerges from Venus and forms a mysterious ring, which seems to be like a wormhole. So Earth and Mars and the Belt send ships to investigate, including the Rosinante. Holden and the crew are getting sued by Mars for stealing their ship, so a journalist called Monica pays their legal fees, and in return she films them for a documentary. But Naomi isn't with them. She loves Holden, Amos, and Alex, but she also loves her people, the Belters. So she joins her friend Drummer on the OPA ship Behemoth. The Behemoth was originally the Nauvoo, the giant Mormon spaceship, but after it was launched at Eros, Fred and Drummer converted it into a giant OPA warship. It represents the hope for a Belter nation, and of the OPA as a real political power. Drummer captains the behemoth at the ring, but she has to contend with Ashford, an OPA pirate who would rather control the ship himself. And there's a greater threat from Clarissa Mao. Clarissa is the eldest daughter of Jules-Pierre Mao, the businessman behind the protomolecule conspiracy. When her father is jailed and shamed for his crimes, Clarissa wants revenge on Holden. So she flies to the ring as a maintenance worker, and she blows up a ship and uses like a deepfake video to frame Holden for her crime. The behemoth attacks the Rossi, so they have to escape into the ring. And inside the ring is a mysterious space where an alien force prevents anything from going above a certain speed. This prevents ships from attacking each other or damaging the ring. And Holden has weird visions of Miller. Miller died when Eros crashed into Venus, but the protomolecule incorporated Miller's consciousness into itself and uses him to communicate with Holden. This ghostly Miller leads Holden to a mysterious station at the center of the ring, and there Holden has visions of the ancient past. He learns that the ring was built by a powerful alien civilization called the Builders. The Builders created the protomolecule, not as a weapon, but as a tool to build these ring gates. But aeons ago, the Builders were destroyed by some mysterious other aliens. This ghost of Miller is the Builder's technology trying to learn what happened to its creators. Some Martians attack Holden, and the ring sees them as a threat, so it suddenly lowers the speed limit, instantly decelerating all the ships in the space, which kills or injures thousands. Drummer and Ashford get trapped under a tractor, 
They spend some quality time and squash their beef. And their legs. But Naomi builds drama some robot legs, so it's all good. But all these injured people are a disaster. Because ships in the Expanse create gravity by constantly accelerating with their thrusters. It's like how you're pushed back in your seat when you accelerate a car, but they accelerate constantly. With the ring's speed limit, they can't accelerate to make gravity, which means the injured people can't heal, because blood doesn't drain right in zero-g. But the behemoth has another way to make gravity. It can spin, creating gravity by centrifugal force. So Ashford invites all the injured Earthers and Martians to the behemoth to heal. It's a show of strength and compassion and reconciliation from the new Belter nation. Naomi returns to the Rosinante, because she's loyal to the Belters, but the Rossi crew are her family. Clarissa tries to kill Holden and attacks Naomi, but she's saved by Anna. Anna is a pastor, and on the ring she offers compassion and comfort to the scared and injured. She offers some guidance to Amos and helps convince Clarissa to cool it with all the murdering and to seek redemption instead. Everyone's still stuck in the ring space, so Ashford tries destroying the ring. The ring gets fed up with humanity and starts charging its weapons to wipe out the entire solar system, like a bloody halo ring. Holden has a better plan and fights Ashford's men for control of the behemoth. With the heroism of the Rossi crew, Drummer, Bobby, Anna, and even Clarissa, they defeat Ashford, and they shut down all their ships to show the ring that they're not a threat. The ring then chills out and reveals its true purpose. It opens a thousand new gates, wormholes to distant star systems with habitable worlds. These are thousands of new opportunities for land and resources and freedom. So in Season 4, humanity ventures into new worlds. Earth, Mars, and the Belt are at peace, and Avasarala becomes the Secretary General of the United Nations, governing Earth. Some Belters go through the ring and settle a planet called Illus, where they discover some mysterious alien protomolecule-looking structures. So Holden and the crew investigate. They land on the alien planet, and Naomi walks under a sky for the first time. As a belter, she grew up in low gravity, so this planet is hell on her body. So she and Alex stay in the Rossi, in orbit. On Illus, Holden tries to make peace between the belter settlers and an Earth corporation who want the planet for themselves. Their leader, Mercury, kills some belters and calls them terrorists. He's a brute, but he's not all wrong. Some of the Belters do blow up a ship full of people in their desperation to keep their new home. Holden investigates the alien structures. The ghost of Miller leads him to reactivate some billion-year-old alien machinery, which malfunctions and explodes, sending a massive tidal wave at their settlement and disabling their ships. They take cover in one of the structures, but it's full of deadly alien slugs, and everyone except Holden goes blind from an infection, and they're running out of food. It's a really shitty time. So Miller guides Holden to a mysterious ancient weapon. Billions of years ago, the builders who created these structures and rings and the protomolecule were destroyed by some other aliens using these weapons. Miller puts himself into a body and steps into the weapon to disable all the alien tech on the planet and to destroy himself. So the tortured ghost of Miller is finally put to rest, and the planet is safe. Holden has a western showdown with Mercury and captures him, rejecting his lawless, brutal, wild west ethos in favour of peace, justice, and due process. Amos has a relationship with one of Mercury's soldiers, and she forces him to choose between her and Mercury or the Rossi crew. And he chooses the Rossi. Alex and Naomi pull some smart moves to keep their ships in the air, including using a railgun as a thruster. They protect a belter, who was a terrorist but was nice about it, and they leave a scientist called Elvi to study the remaining alien artifacts. So the crew save Illus, but this alien technology remains a mystery. On Earth, Avasarala fights a political battle. She is challenged in an election by a rival, Nancy Gao, and Avasarala pulls some dirty tricks to try and win. 
She leaks and lies and orders a military strike that ends up killing civilians. In the end, Avasarala loses the election, and her husband Arjun leaves because she put politics and pride ahead of her morals and her family. Without Arjun and without her power, who is Avasarala now? On Mars, Bobby gets kicked out of the military for constantly disobeying orders to go save the world, and life on Mars is kind of depressing now. Martians had worked together for generations to terraform the red planet into a habitable world, but now that there are thousands of already habitable planets beyond the ring, Mars is kind of pointless. People leave. Bobby had believed in the Martian dream, but now that dream is dying and her new boyfriend who buys her waffles leaves as well. So Bobby gets involved with some criminals who steal Martian technology and sell it on the black market. It seems harmless at first, but she discovers that it's linked to a dangerous conspiracy. In the ring, the OPA ship Behemoth is renamed to Medina Station. It's the hub of a new Belter nation, and the gateway to the worlds beyond the ring. It's run by Ashford and Drummer, and they learn that peace is hard. They try to cooperate with Earth and Mars, but many Belters still hate the inner planets. There are attacks by a Belter extremist called Marco Inaros. Back in the day, Naomi had a son with Marco, called Philip. Naomi left Marco because she didn't want to be involved in Marco's terrorism, and Naomi hasn't seen her son since. Marco believes that peace between Belters and the inner planets is impossible, and they need to fight for their future. So Marco plans a terrible attack, using Bobby's stolen Martian technology. He gets an asteroid and paints it with Martian stealth tech and launches it towards Earth. This could kill billions of people, and with the stealth tech, they won't see it coming. So will Earth be saved? Will Bobby uncover a Martian conspiracy? Will Holden discover the mysteries of the alien builders? Will Naomi reunite with Marco and Philip? Will Alex and Amos make peace with their pasts? Comment below what you hope to see in The Expanse Season 5. And subscribe to this channel, we've got a video about The Expanse Season 5 coming out soon.